Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video solution, we'll talk about the problem maximum length of a concatenated string with unique characters. It's a medium rated problem and we'll see how to break it down apart and we'll slowly build up to the solution. I'm going to present this in three parts. First, we'll try to understand what the problem means. Then we'll talk about the brute force solution. And then finally, an optimization based on pruning the tree. The optimization in fact is so clean, is so neat that we have to write very minimal code to see a 10x gain in runtime. Anyways, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about the problem. Okay, you've given this array as an input, which is a list of strings. I've taken the case of UN, IQ, and UE over here. Now the question says that you want to enumerate all the subsequences and you have to find one such possible subsequence which follows both of these conditions. First condition being it should be maximum length. And the second condition says that it should have unique characters only. Now I've went ahead and written down all of the subsequences of this particular array. So we have all of those cases over here. Now we'll follow these two conditions. First, let's think about the unique characters thing. So in all of these strings, we see that both of these strings over here will get canceled out because they have this character u repeating in both of them. We'll remove this. Of those remaining strings, now we check for the maximum length of this concatenated string. And we find that u and iq and iq ue both follow this maximum length, having the answer as 4. And that is what we'll return as the final answer. Okay, so now we'll actually want to talk about the brute force part. Now, brute force part is just formalizing what we discussed. Since the first step was enumerating all the subsequences, let's go ahead and do that. And so this is the generation part where we'll look at the length of the array as n. There are n words in total. And for each of the word, I either want to include it or exclude it in the considerations, which means that there is a binary operation for every single word. And that is for n total words. So our order of two to the power n complexity. If that isn't clear yet, uh, let's actually look at a visual. And in this case, we see that we have CHA over here. We're looking at the first word and we're making a decision to include it in the first part and excluding it in the second part. Similarly for R, once we have CHA, we can append R to it or skip over R. In this case, we had nothing before and we add R to it or skip R again. So on and so forth, we can generate this for every single possible word. And so you can see this recursive sort of tree-like structure that we are actually going to follow. And uh, with this, uh, we now come to the final part of this brute force solution, which is uh, we have enumerate all the subsequences, but we still need to find what is the, like, is it following the condition of unique characters or not? So we'll, we can do that check in order of total length, which is going to be n times m. m represents the maximum length of one string, one word. And so nm is the total complexity for the checking part, two to the power n for the generation part. And so this is our final answer. If you note, this will actually work and we'll actually want to code this up as well because the optimized version of it depends upon this code. Okay, let's go ahead and write the recursive function. As we saw in the visual, we want to keep track of which element we are looking at. Is it R? Is it CHA? Is it ACT? How do we know? We can pass in an integer which sort of represents the current index. Okay and uh, that should give us all the information we need. We also want to have another piece of information which says that, okay, what is the current string up till now? Because we need to pass the total final string at the very end to this checking function. So that can tell us whether it is a valid possible answer or not. So we'll also pass in the string with it. Now we'll talk about the base case for the recursion, which is going to be if uh, i is greater than equals to n, then we can return, right? If you have exhausted every single possible case, if you have reached the end of this tree over here, then we can exit. Uh, before we do that, we also want to do this checking over here, whether if it's a correct unique character string or not. And there's a very neat solution in Python. We can do this check if the length of the string is the same as the length of the set of the string. If that is the case, then we can have this answer as the maximum of whatever the previous answer was and the current answer is. 
And with that, we're done with the checking part and the base case for the recursion. Now, the recursion itself is actually very, very simple. We'll have recurs. And we want to recurs for the next element, but what is the string going to be? In the case we decide to exclude it, we can just pass the string as is. There is no change to the string. In case we decide to actually uh, have this new string, uh, we'll write this new string down as string plus the current word. With that, we're done with the recursion part of things. I'm not kidding, this is it. I will actually set up the base variables as well. So n is going to be the length of the array. Answer is going to be uh, zero. And we'll start a recursion, which is uh, the string initially will be empty string and i will be zero. And we can return the answer at the end. If you actually try running this, it won't work because Python has this issue with the uh, variables. So we'll actually convert this to self dot ans. Cool. Now we'll actually test this out and see if it works. Cool. Uh, observe the runtime over here. The runtime is 1.3 seconds, which is not very good. In fact, we can optimize this a lot, lot more. Let's actually look at the optimization part now. Okay. So in this, we've taken this example, same example as we saw before. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do this one simple observation. Look at this purple box and see what you find over here. What we see is that there is a repetition of characters. This character C is repeated twice and the character A is also repeated twice, which means that any strings that come out after this string, any children of this particular node are also going to be invalid since this is an invalid node in itself. What in other words that means is that we can just kill off this recursion over here. We can just not do this recursion over here and that will save us a lot of space and a lot of time. And that is pretty much it for the optimization. This is what is called the pruning of a tree and we're going to implement that now. So before we spawn off this new recursion with this new string, let's also check if this particular new string is following this condition over here. So I'm just going to take this from here. I'm going to paste it over here as easy as that. And instead of this string, we'll check the new string. And this should be it. Let's go ahead and do a check. Cool. And we'll try submitting this. Finally, if you note the runtime is now 96 milliseconds instead of 1300, which is a very big jump from a very simple line of change. Look at this line again. All we have done is we have added this condition over here instead of here. Anyways, that is it for this video solution of maximum length of a concatenated string with unique characters. And as always, thanks for watching.